Hello guys, so today we will be discussing the problem vowel anxiety on courtship. Uh, so the problem statement goes like, Utkarsh has recently started taking English language classes to improve his reading and writing skills. However, he is struggling to learn English. His teachers uh, gave him a problem to improve the vowel identification skills. So there is a string of uh, S that is of length N consisting of lowercase English letters. Woodcuts has to start from the first letter of the string. Each time he encounters a vowel that is a character which is uh, A, E, I, O or U. He has to reverse the entire substrings that he had came before the vowel. Okay, and Utkarsh needs help verifying his answer. Can you print the final string after performing all the operation for him? Okay, so what are they saying? They are uh, they will be giving certain bunch of test cases, and first of all, for each and every test case, we will get the length of the string. So this is the length of the string that is ten. Then we will be given a certain string that is consisting of only lowercase alphabets. Now for each and every uh like character when we are uh, getting a vowel like a first of all we get a that is a vowel so all the characters preceding a would be reversed okay so a is uh, obviously the first character so we cannot reverse any of the characters over here so a would remain the same then we traverse to b c d okay so a b c d we traverse then we again get a vowel e when we reach e a, B, C and D would reverse. Okay, so this would become D, C, B, A and then E as they have explained in the test case itself. Okay, so let us first copy the test case and see how can we do this. So what the test case given to us is this. A, B, C. D E F G H I. Okay. So, what we can do is while traversing through the whole array, while traversing through the whole array, whenever we get a vowel, let's suppose we got a vowel, so we might have stored all the characters in a string. So what we will be doing is s equals to s plus the current character, let it be ch, okay. So s equals to s plus ch, so we would add a, okay, since uh, there was no string preceding a, then we would add b, then we would add c, then we would add d, okay. Once we have added a, b, c, d, once we have added a, b, c, d, our s or string at that point of time would have been a b c d now when we encounter a vowel and we see our string is non empty we would reverse our string so this would become d c b a and then we would append our vowel into it that is e so this is the brute force approach over here okay but each and every each and every character can be a vowel in itself okay so that would require us one that is we would be reversing the uh, string when it is of length 1, we will be reversing the string when it is of length 2, we will be reversing the string when it is of length 3, so on, so on, so on. So this can go up till n into n plus 1, this can go up till n into n plus 1 by 2, which would be order of n square, or big O of n square over here, okay. but uh time complexity range that we are given n is 10 to the power 6 and even the test cases are in the range 10 to the power 4 so obviously we must have a linear solution at least okay we must have a linear solution else we would not pass all the test cases over here okay we could have only passed some of the test cases over here so how can we optimize this how can we optimize this so let us discuss that as well Let's suppose, first of all, I'll explain you a concept. Let's suppose we are given a string A, B, C, D. Okay. Now we are uh, like reading the 
elements or the characters from left to right okay and someone says someone says reverse this string someone says reverse this string so this string would become d c b and a now this is the string again we are reading from left to right so if someone says that uh, we have to reverse certain string and instead of reversing it we read the string from right to left we read the string from left uh, right to left instead of reading the characters from left to right so would that, would that be the same as reversing reversing the string so you can note this out as well so this would be the same so dcba if we go from right to left this would be a operation similar to reversing the string in itself okay so what we can do is suppose we get a vowel okay suppose we get a vowel so we can append it on the right hand side or left hand side depending on certain criteria now that criteria we will see over here okay so what we will do over here is we will first of all keep a string s that will denote uh, the current string the current string by keeping the first i elements okay so suppose we have iterated or we have reached till i equals to 4 that would be e so what would be the string look like okay and we would keep a second uh, thing that would be like the vowel count okay so we would keep a vowel count so suppose our vowel count is 0 suppose our vowel count is 0 that is we don't have any vowel as of now okay so can we say we can keep appending our elements at the end of the string let's suppose we are getting uh, only consonants over here like b like b c and d okay so can we append these consonants one after the another yes we can do that okay because no vowels are occurring but let's suppose let's suppose one vowel occurs one vowel occurs let uh, let us say a occurs now now if a occurs now if a occurs what we can do is instead of reversing this whole part okay instead of uh, or should i say instead of reversing this whole part b c d what i will do is i will not append a at the end of b c d i will append a at the start of b c d okay so if i append a at the start of b c d so this would become a b c d and now if i traverse from right to left d c b a this would be the answer okay and if you would have reversed this uh, like sub part that is b c d it, this would have given a dcb and then we would have appended a at the end so this would have been the same case over here okay so this is the thing i am making whenever our count would be even whenever our count would be even we will append at the end and whenever our count would be odd we will start appending at the start okay so we append at the end or we append at the start that will depend upon our vowel count okay and it keeps on switching uh, like if the vowel count is uh, like 0 2 4 6 that is they are even numbers okay so we will uh, like keep on appending at the last at the last at the last okay as soon as we get another uh, vowel we will start appending at the first now again if we get a vowel we will start appending at the last okay so this is how we will switch from last to first and first to last okay and what all operation do we need over here we want to append at the last element we want to append at the starting element and we want to access these elements as well because at the end either we would be traversing from left to right or we could also be traversing from right to left so we need to access these elements uh, either from the start or either from the end okay so what uh, which data structure allows us to do so there is a data structure known as dq which allows us to perform this uh, this operation that is uh, push and pop at the end and push and pop at the start uh, very quickly and very optimally 
so we will be using dq over here dq is like an implementation of a doubly linked list okay so you can add a block at the right you can add a block at the left and you can remove any of the blocks because you are storing pointer to both the ends of the block okay so let us dry run our approach as well okay just to see if it passes the sample test case or not okay so we will just dry run our approach okay so we are keeping the vowel count and the string s so if we get a a vowel count would be one okay a vowel count would be one so a vowel count is one we append since the string is uh, empty it doesn't uh, matter where we append so we start now since it is one we will not append at the end we will append in the start so b c d e would go in the start b c d okay now again we get a vowel again if we get a vowel so this would become two okay so this would become two again we would append at the end okay for f as well we would do the same for g as well we would do the same and for h as well okay and as soon as we get i that is again a vowel as soon as we get i that is again a vowel now our vowel would be vowel count would be three we would append i at the start and again we would append j at the start okay now this is a vowel count and this is our final string okay since our vowel count is even we would traverse from right to left instead of traversing from left to right if our vowel count would have been even at the end we would have uh, like traverse from left to right so our answer would be reverse of this or traversing from right to left it would be h g f e a b c d i and j so this would be our answer and just confirming this as well so this would be a g f e a a g f e a b c d i g b c d i g okay so yeah we are getting the correct answer as well okay so this would be the approach for the following problem we would be using a dq for each and every time we get a vowel we will increase our count if the count is even we will append at the end if the count is odd we will append at the start i hope the algorithm was clear to you guys so i want to introduce you guys to another new feature at codechef that you we have brought in so what you can do is you can go to any of the practice problems okay and if you are facing any difficulty in any of the practice problem and you are stuck in any of the problems you have some clarifications to make okay so what you can do is you can straight away go to ask a doubt uh, tab over here in that you can click on this pop up over here and you can type in your coach of username over here so once that is done there will be designated ta to help you out with all your doubts okay so i hope you will use this going forward and this will benefit you a lot okay so coming back to the problem okay so let us look at the code solution for this as well so the c++ code would look like first of all we are taking the test cases that is t as input for each and every test case we first of all make a dq data structure that will store that will store all the characters okay now we are taking the length of string as input and then we are taking the string itself as input okay we are taking uh, the count as zero that will depict us the vowel count over here this would depict us the vowel count over here okay and if we are getting a vowel uh, we increase the count okay this is what we do now as we have discussed if the count is even that is it is divisible by 2 we will push at the back okay because initially we are traversing from left to right we will keep pushing at the back uh, uh, until we encounter a vowel and it forces us to push at the start because we encounter a vowel we have to reverse and we have to uh, go from right to left instead of going from left to right 
okay so this is the way uh, we will be handling our string manipulation okay so we will push at the back whenever we are uh, seeing that our count is even else we will push at the front okay and we will see at the last when we have completed com uh, string manipulation or we have iterated over the whole string and we have adjusted the uh, characters of the string according to our algorithm okay what we will do is we will check if count is equals to an even number or not or count is divisible by two or not if the count is divisible by two we don't have to think that much we will start iterating from left to right okay or we will start uh, popping elements from the front okay so we will start uh, popping elements from the front and we will go till last okay this is like iterating from left to right and we would get our answer if this is not the case uh, that is our count variable that is the vowel count was odd now if vowel count was odd we will be iterating from right, right to left okay so we would be uh, popping the elements from the back first okay so we will keep popping our elements from the back till the dq is not empty so this is the uh, difference that we would be following that is if it is even we will pop from front till dq is empty else we will pop from back and at the last we will output our answer okay here we are outputting one by one the characters without space okay so that would represent the final string in itself and we are keeping c out and then or to go on the next line as well okay so let us just try run this for the sample test cases for sample test cases we are expecting the answer h g f e a b c d i j and g a c b a d e so h g f e a b c d i j and g a c b a d e okay so let us submit for all the test cases as well and see if it passes all the test cases or not So it does passes all the test cases. So our algorithm and intuition was right. So we'll see you in the next class. Till then, keep coding and have a great time, guys. Thank you.